growing great tomatoes along the front range of the Rocky Mountains, from New Mexico to Montana. Hi, I'm Larry Stebbins, and let's take a look at some ways we've learned to have a successful tomato crop. The first thing, you need to pick a sunny location. Eight hours or more of sunlight is an absolute must, and the soil needs to be rich and organic. Now, we have other videos to show just how we prepare the soil, but make sure it's crumbly and friable just like this. You'll want to select a tomato plant that is right for the space that you have. Indeterminate tomato plants grow tall like the one on the left. Determinants are bushy and stay shorter, so pick the ones that are right for your space. Now, should you plant heirlooms or hybrids? And what is the difference? Well, here you can see some heirloom tomatoes. Heirlooms are considered varieties that have been around for a long time, perhaps the ones that your great-grandparents or grandparents used to grow. They usually were ones that were around since 1950 or earlier. They usually breed true to form, and if you save the seeds, you will probably get the plant that you had the year before. We believe it's important to plant some heirloom tomatoes and also to save the seeds for future generations. Here you can see one of our favorites, the heirloom red brandywine. Hybrid tomato plants were those that were bred from two different parents. If you save the seeds, they will probably not breed true to form. But they do have some excellent characteristics, so you may want to try some hybrids as well. This one is one of our favorites, Big Beef. It is a consistent performer and it is also resistant to many diseases. Now it is time to consider planting your tomatoes. But remember, wait until all danger of frost has passed. We also wait until the soil temperature has reached 55 degrees or warmer and buy stocky plants with good rich green color. Pinch off the bottom leaves and plant two to three inches deeper than it was in the pot. This allow it to get a good deep root growth. Here in the Rocky Mountain region, because the climate is so variable in the spring, we use hoop tunnels and we harvest sooner and increase our yields. However, if you don't have a hoop tunnel, you can use vented containers to protect your young plants. Some folks like using these wallow waters to help protect their tomato plants, but our favorites are still the hoop tunnels. Remember to give them plenty of room. Here you can see in this 4x8 hoop tunnel, we have just two bush type or determinate varieties of tomatoes. Also you can see in the front of the beds, we have planted some lettuce. We'll harvest those out before the tomato plants get too large. As the plants begin to grow, we pinch off the suckers in the crotch of the branches. They don't produce fruit, and they just add to the bulk of the plant. Your plants will need staking or caging. Even some bush varieties will need this support as they grow. This is a very important tip. Trim off all the leaves 18 inches up the stem. Here in the Rocky Mountain region, in August and through September when the fruits are ripening, the soil will need to stay warm and this will allow the sun to penetrate, warm up the soil, and you will get a larger harvest in the late summer. Throughout the season, remember to fertilize once every three weeks. Stop once your tomatoes are about this far along. We recommend using all organic fertilizers like fish emulsion or perhaps seaweed extract. We use a combination of both these. But our favorite is compost tea. Just take one third cow manure in a bucket, two thirds water, let it sit for about a week, ladle it off and pour it around your plants. It's an excellent fertilizer as your plants are continuing to grow. A handful of backyard compost scratched around your plants is excellent throughout the season. If you look out one day and see your leaves or tomatoes chewed on, look for these large worms, the tomato hornworm. They eat your leaves and they'll also eat your tomatoes. Just pick them off. I think that's the best way to control them. If you see these moths flying around, these are the ones that lay the eggs to produce those caterpillars. 
If you look out at your tomato plants and some of them are forming like this, it is blossom end rot. It is usually caused by the lack of calcium uptake by the plant. Now in the Rocky Mountain areas, we have plenty of calcium in our soil. And the reason the plant can't take it up is because the soil is either too dry, too wet, or there's a combination of both. So make sure that your garden is kept evenly moist throughout the season. Another problem is that plants get wilt or leaf spot diseases. Be sure to rotate your tomato plants to different garden spots each year, and perhaps you'll be able to avoid this. But you can also purchase plants that are disease resistant. Ask your local nursery which ones are best for your area. And again, remember to avoid overcrowding. Give your plants plenty of room to grow. When your tomatoes look like this, it's time to harvest. Off of one big beef tomato plant, you should get about 100 ripe tomatoes before frost comes on. Well, good luck growing your tomatoes. Again, it's one of America's favorite vegetables to be grown in the garden. They come in all sizes, all tastes, so plant a few varieties and experiment and enjoy. But you may have trouble keeping your granddaughter away from the tomato plants as they begin to ripen. This is Larry. Happy gardening!